The origin of his family name, Springer, actually dates to about 1089 AD and involves a man named Louis II. He was a military officer for the German Emperor Henry IV. And apparently, Louis offended his superior officer in some way or another, and he was imprisoned in the battlements of an old German castle. He remained there in this prison for about two years before he finally elected to jump or, or to spring out the window of this, this uh, castle. And he plummeted 100 feet below into the river. Lewis was recaptured and brought before the emperor. And instead of punishing him for trying to escape, he actually pardoned Lewis for having the courage to, to complete this daring feat that he had just done, and, and he gave him the name Springer. He apparently did not suffer an aversion to castles because he went on to build one for himself, and he called it Wartburg Castle. Little did Lewis know that over 700 years later, a distant relative named John Wallace Springer would also build himself a castle, and this one was to be located in the future Highlands Ranch area and he called it Castle Isabel. Before coming to the Denver area, John Wallace Springer had actually made quite a name for himself as a lawyer in Illinois. Apparently, he had an amazing gift for public speaking. It was said that he had the ability to hold the audience in the palm of his hand. He was a powerful debater and just a very eloquent man. In 1891, he moved to Dallas, Texas, where he became involved in the banking industry. And this was where he met a man named Colonel William Hughes. John Springer married Eliza Clifton Hughes. Her father, Colonel William Hughes, had by that point developed quite a bit of trust and respect for John Springer, and he displayed this by giving him the position of secretary of his company, Continental Land and Cattle Company. In 1897, Eliza and John Springer moved to Denver. They very, very quickly paved a prominent position for themselves in local affairs. He even ran what turned out to be an unsuccessful campaign for mayor in 1904. Springer had an interest and a background in banking and politics and law. And he also was very prominently involved in various ranching organizations, so it really isn't a surprise that he would go on to develop one of the largest and the most successful cattle ranches in Colorado. Unfortunately, we don't know too much about the actual construction process of Springer's mansion. We do know that his building made up about 60% of the building's current construction. According to various sources, what brought Springer and his wife Eliza to Colorado was actually Eliza's poor health. It was recommended by a physician that she move to the west where the air is thinner, not so heavy, and it could possibly help her health problems. Unfortunately, it didn't. John Springer was absolutely crushed by the death of his wife. He didn't disappear altogether, but he was a lot less active. I believe that he needed some solace to concentrate on the fact that he was now a single parent to their daughter, Annie Clifton Springer. He needed time. It was during this state of mind and during a business trip to St. Louis that Springer met a woman named Isabel Patterson, and he was captivated by this woman, and the two married in 1909. Isabel has been described as being a very, very beautiful woman with amazing charm and spirit, 
and she just swept Springer right off his feet. The problem was that Isabel had recently been divorced, and this was not something that was highly regarded. She had a reputation as having an addiction to nightlife and excitement. Despite all of this, Springer was very enamored by his wife, and he brought her back to Denver, and he tried desperately to earn her a position in Denver's social circles. He even named the elegant home that he had constructed on his cross-country horse and cattle ranch, Castle Isabel. Isabel's addiction to nightlife and to excitement induced her husband to rent her a suite at Denver's Brown Palace Hotel. And this was a place that Isabel could use at her leisure if she had a late night at the theater and needed to stay overnight, or if she wanted to entertain her friends, this was a place that Isabel could use. Can you imagine Springer's shock when two years into their marriage, Denver headlines reported a brutal murder in the bar of the Brown Palace Hotel that involved two men, Frank Henwood, and Sylvester Von Fuhl, who were allegedly two men that Isabel was seeing on the side. The murder apparently resulted from a disagreement between Henwood and Von Fuhl as to who was the true holder of Isabel's heart. When Frank Henwood attempted to empty his gun into the body of Von Fuhl, two innocent bystanders were also struck their names were Copeland and Atchison. Both were taken to the hospital. Copeland died shortly thereafter. This murder and the trial that followed, in which all the details of Isabel's affairs with these two men came out into the public, remains to this day one of the most scandalous events in Denver's history. Springer was just crushed by the betrayal of his wife, Isabel. He was very much in love with her. It was just a devastating event for Springer, and he tried so hard for local respect and local prominence. He divorced her five days after the murder. Isabel actually died six years later in a New York City hospital from the effects of a morphine addiction that she was suffering. So it was, it was just a, a very sad ending to the story for Isabel and for Springer. <laughs>